In this two-part video, we'll learn how to write user-defined functions in MATLAB. This video explains the purpose and syntax of functions. The next video dives into MATLAB to practice writing and calling a function. There are two types of M files in MATLAB, scripts and functions. We already learned about scripts. Scripts are useful for automating a series of MATLAB commands, such as computations that you have to perform repeatedly from the command line or a series of commands that you have to reference. On the other hand, functions are blocks of code dedicated to performing a particular task. Speaking mathematically, a function takes an input x, operates on it, and returns an output y. A MATLAB function is thematically similar. It can accept inputs, do some stuff, and return outputs. This is a huge advantage over scripts because scripts cannot accept inputs or issue outputs. That being said, the two are commonly used in tandem. We'll go over this in a bit more later. Functions can be stored in two ways. First, you can write a function within a script file, but it must be placed at the very end of the script. This is just an odd MATLAB quirk. I don't really recommend this, but sometimes you might want to for convenience. For example, many of my subsequent YouTube videos will contain a function embedded at the end of a script file, so I only have to share one M file instead of two. However, the recommended storage method is to save your function as a standalone M file. This promotes reusability and good organization. For example, let's say you write a function to compute the area of a square. If you save it as its own M file, you can easily find that file later in a future class. But if you stuff that function at the end of a script, you have to remember which script it's located in, and finding it later on may be challenging. In the context of programming, functions are incredibly useful because they can be used to divide a large problem into smaller parts. This is the basis of a philosophy called modular programming. Instead of solving a problem in one giant script, it's good practice to break the problem into small chunks and solve each chunk using a function. Doing so makes your code less prone to bugs and helps other users understand your code. Later on, we'll cover modular programming in more depth. Here's the syntax of a MATLAB function. The first line of a MATLAB function is called the function header. The function header always starts with the blue function keyword. Then you list all the outputs in a bracket. Then you put the assignment operator, aka the equal sign, because the function returns the outputs. After the assignment operator, you put the name of the function. Choose your function name carefully. If you store the function as a standalone M file, the name of the file needs to be the function name. Finally, you list the inputs to the function in parentheses. After the function header, you need to give some comments describing what the function does and what all the inputs and outputs are. Take your time with this and be descriptive. Thoroughly documenting your code is conducive to faster debugging and enhanced readability. After the comments, you type the body of the function, which is basically just the code that the function is supposed to execute. Finally, conclude the function by adding the blue end keyword. Here's an example of a complete function. Let's start by examining the function header. We see the blue function keyword followed by the list of output arguments. In this case, there are two outputs called perim and area. The function is called get underscore geometry and it accepts two inputs, length and width. We see that there are plenty of comments describing what the function does and what each input and output are. From the documentation, it seems like this function is used to calculate the perimeter and area of a rectangle given its length and width. Then we have the actual code that the function executes. We calculate the perimeter and area, and we also have an fprintf statement which prints the area to the command window. We don't have a corresponding fprintf statement to print the perimeter to the command window, which is an odd design choice, but oh well. Before we proceed any further, I want to hammer home the importance of good documentation. Writing good documentation isn't just for my benefit, it can also benefit you. If you're having trouble implementing a function, you can issue the help command followed by the name of the function, and MATLAB will print the function's documentation. Do yourself a favor and take the time to carefully write comments so that you can potentially save yourself a major headache from trying to debug a poorly documented function. Let's say that you've now written a MATLAB function and saved it as a standalone M file like you see in the picture here. What happens now? Once functions are created, they just sit in the working directory until they're used. You can think of functions like muscles in your body. Your body has a bunch of muscles which do different things. You're not always using every muscle in your body. If you're sitting at a desk while watching this, your leg muscles are probably inactive. 
but if you get up and do some squats, your brain tells your quads, glutes, calves, hamstrings, and more to activate so that you can perform a squat. Similarly, functions just kind of sit in your folder until they're activated. Activating a function is formally referred to as calling or invoking the function. There are two ways you can call a function. The first is through the command window, and you can call it like any other built-in MATLAB function we've learned about so far. In practice, this is pretty rare because most functions have some degree of complexity which makes it unsuitable for just calling it in the command window by itself. Instead, you can write a script which calls the function and does things with the function's inputs and outputs. A script which does this is called a driver script or driver file. We'll be using driver scripts heavily for the remainder of the class. That being said, I'll be calling functions from the command window for the remainder of this presentation purely for illustrative purposes. As stated in the beginning of the video, one of the chief advantages of a function is its ability to accept input and output arguments. You'll encounter various functions with various numbers of inputs and outputs. I've tried to classify the use case of functions depending on how many inputs and outputs they have in this table here. If a function takes no inputs and gives no outputs, it's probably used to print something like instructions or a readme to the user. If a function accepts one input but does not return an output, it might be used to print a customized message using that input. If a function has multiple inputs and or outputs, it's probably used to calculate one or many things, such as the get underscore geometry function from slide 4. Of course, this table is just a generalization, but you should be aware that functions don't actually need to have any inputs or outputs. Here's an example of a function which has no input or output arguments. It's called print underscore Hamlet, and like the name suggests, it prints the first 14 lines of the infamous to be or not to be soliloquy. To call the function in the command window, we type the name of the function in empty parentheses because it has no inputs. Because there are no inputs, we could omit the parentheses if we want, but I think it's good practice to include them. When the function is called, the body of the function is executed and the first part of Shakespeare's soliloquy is printed. Here's an example of a function with one input but no outputs. This function is called make underscore greeting, and it accepts a string or character vector representing someone's name. The function prints a simple greeting using the given name. When we call it in the command window, we supply whatever name we want inside the parentheses after the make underscore greeting name as the input argument. In this case, I gave the function my name. When JSON is passed into the function, it is assigned to the name variable, which is specifically called a parameter. One nice thing about functions is that you can supply different input or output argument names when calling functions. For example, we don't always have to call the name variable name when we invoke the make greeting function. If we use this monstrosity of a variable name and supply it to the make greeting function, the value within this variable is essentially stored in the name parameter, and the body of the function uses the value within the name parameter in the fprintf statements. This is incredibly useful because we often invoke a function repeatedly. For instance, say we want to greet a second person, James. We can make another variable holding the name of the second person and supply it to the make greeting function just the same. Therefore, we can call a function as many times as we want without having to worry about reusing or recycling the names of the arguments themselves. A function can return multiple outputs, but sometimes you don't need all of them. If you don't need one of the output arguments, you can replace the variable name with a tilde and MATLAB will essentially skip that output. For instance, let's say we don't need the second and third output arguments of the doRandomStuff function. We replace them with tildes in the function call, so when this line is executed, we will only receive the items and things variables. This is useful if your function outputs a bunch of stuff that you might not always utilize. To summarize, this video reviewed the purpose and syntax of a function m file. Their utility lies in being able to take inputs and produce outputs. Practically, functions are used to break a large problem into smaller parts. As stated earlier, we'll go over modular programming in more depth very soon. In the next video, we'll practice calling the get underscore geometry function from earlier in this presentation in MATLAB. See you next time.